All right. So this week on the Feeble Minded Podcast, I have Diamond Team Manager, filmer, and longtime friend of mine, Spanish Mike. What's good? What's good, Chad? What up, man? I can't believe I got you in here. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually uh, thrilled <laughs> and excited at like, how amazing this uh, setup is. It's been like, I think, 10 years or so since we've like skated or even hung out really something yeah like that. i was tripping when i pulled up to your house i was like <laughs> yo i used to pull up pick this guy up and do episodes and i was yeah. like bugging out like yo do this do that like it's funny um so you started spanish mike tv episode one you picked me up at this house it was we went out yeah we went we <laughs> skated tanner brett was in there yeah um i don't know that was a that was a crazy time for me i feel like i feel like um doing doing that was like i just was trying to have fun like and and i don't think anyone knew what i was doing but i i didn't know what i was doing myself i just had this camera and had the little fish eye and i was like i was like what if i film my friends whatever we do and upload it instantly that was before live and all this stuff now where yeah it's so easy to just do things off the you know in your hand like so i was like man but that means i wanted to film the whole day import it edit it and drop it the same day so people know it's realistically the same day yeah so i did it for like probably a week to two weeks straight with you guys like every single day if you look at the episodes it's like from may something on and then my brother's like you need to like schedule it like people need to know when it's gonna drop and i'm like i don't care about that i want it to just drop just drop and then yeah. like, eventually i would drop it you know, every week or so, and then just do one and ha kind of start creating ideas. And then like slowly it became like people became characters. Like you became a character, Fuchs, or just things just started happening. I was like betting on the show. Like, I don't know, you smoked uh, cigarettes then. So I was like, yo, do something for cigarettes. And you're like, yeah. all right, cool. Like, yeah, Swiss tray for a yeah, pack of cigarettes. It, it happened like second try. <laughs> yeah. Now I remember like a, a, a real change in you, like when you decided to do that. Like, you almost seem like you were set. Like, you're like, all right, I'm going to try to make this my living or, like, do mm -hmm. something with it. Like, you really seem like well, you became driven in a different way at that time, you know? I had a, I had an idea. I, it was, like, crazy because at the time I was working at the supermarket, so I wasn't making much money to, like, do much. But I would, like, save up whatever I could. And then I was thinking, like, man, what if I reach out to these pros and I just come out for a weekend? Like, I'll just be, like, in behind the midst. Just let me film what you guys do. And it was, like, early on vlogging, which I didn't even know at the time. But I was just capturing the moment, like how I always say, capturing the moment. Yeah. So I was like, let me do this pro, this pro. And I was, like, had an idea of, like, maybe Rob Deerdick, I can fly with Rob Deerdick out and and do one with rob deerdick and like and just pay for my own food and all this stuff and i don't know i just i was already dreaming way too bigger than what i thought then but hey, I, not was, really because yeah. it kind of but you know you you got to that point so the big dream kind of was necessary you know yeah i, I want to say like i'm there's the moments of me where i'm like man i want to do it again and do the episodes because I, I have these little times but i'm like I have to come out in a different way now. I feel like everyone does the same thing, but like I did it almost 10 years ago and I was like early on in the game. I wish I kept going it, but I feel like m that was my stepping stone to get me where I was at to where I'm at now. 100%. And that was pretty much when we stopped hanging out because you started going down this road. And I think the first thing I remember like of you, like I'll stop hanging out was when you met Manny Santiago because then you were like traveling with him and doing all this stuff, right? Yeah, like I got the opportunity... I remember, like, Felix was like, yo, you can come live with us. Like, I got a job for you at Famous. And I was like, damn, that sounds so cool. Like, come stay at my house, everything, man. He's like, yeah, you want to come film this promo? Mind you, I'm just coming out of, like, filming you guys, like, on some homie shit. And I was just like, yeah, I know how to film good. <laughs> I just, like, finessed it. Like, oh, yeah. Like, I, I, I was always determined to, to get better at everything I did in life. Yeah. And at that time, I was like, man, what if I mess up? Like, F it. I'm just going to go and see what happens. And, like, I don't know, expect anything. When I get there, I'm just like, oh, wow, like, this is crazy. And then I just started doing all these things. And I never went home for that one year I, I came. Because I remember being like, if I go home, will I come back? So, like, I, like, yeah, didn't want to come wanna. home. And I for one year, I didn't come home. So I missed all the holidays and everything. My parents were like, what are you doing? I'm just like, I got to be out here. I got to work. I got to work. So, yeah, it's probably a good move, too. Doing uh, that. Yeah, yeah I, I, I don't regret anything I've done like to where I'm at now, I feel like everything was a, was a lesson learned and, and life. You learn a lot of things. And I feel like the, almost it's about to be like almost 10 years. Like I did in 2000, it was like 2009, 2008 when I started. So yeah, almost like wow. 10 years. So I feel like it's crazy where, how much 10 years has gone 
by so fast, but also how, how everyone is now, like seeing you and what you're doing. And, and it's cool. I feel like I'm not, I don't want to take credit for anything, but I want to feel like it's I feel like I had a spark and then like everything else sparked with everyone else around because you guys sparked me growing up. But like I didn't have anything to bring to the table because I was so young. So to me, you guys skating was like the spark for me. Like, damn, like. Chad and these guys are all like older and like they're doing all this yeah. stuff so I feel like seeing you being media savvy being non-media savvy before <laughs> like like not even caring yeah. about any of this stuff like it's so awesome I'm like damn I'm proud of you like that's awesome like you're actually doing your thing and then seeing Brett do his thing like I don't talk to him as much as we used to yeah come on Brett you better hit me up I'm trying to be <laughs> a new guy no nah, but it's cool like I, I'm happy and then Joe face too like I, I wish I could take all my friends and bring them wherever I'm at but it's so hard of like the position you're in because you can't like be able to like afford everyone to live, you know. I wish you could just. I wish yeah. I can get a big house and everyone can live there. We can do everything we, you know, we're yeah. doing now. But and then there's also elements of like, if you b- start bringing people in, that's on your shoulders. Mm. And if you never know how something will end up or pan out, or yeah. like Sometimes it can get tough to always be, you know, handing out opportunities left and right and stuff like yeah. that. You know, if I have something good that I know will fit somebody, I'll bring it to the table. But then sometimes people get scared. Like, there's moments, I love Torty, but there's moments where I'll be like, yo, he wants to say, I'm going to drive everything I'm doing. I'm like, bro, you're not going to drive everything you're doing. Like, we've been said this. Like, I try to, like, yeah. I don't know. I feel like he would. I don't know. It's just like, some people like too much security, but I like to have a risk at the same time. Yeah. I like security, but I also like to take a risk. I feel like if you don't know what on the other side, you won't, like. Yeah. It, like the reward you won't know like what can happen you know if you know you're going to the same job over and over again how are you going to know what's going to outcome of this opportunity over here what's going to happen and that's one thing i always did when i like 10 years ago when i started all this stuff every opportunity that came my way i never denied it and i still don't to this day like i feel like anything comes my way i check it out you know and yeah and still put my best efforts in it because i feel like you don't know what that opens up exactly and that's something i was like in the past i would shy away from opportunities or be like worried what people thought or things and now i'm more taking them in and it's it's cool watching it evolve and stuff like that yeah i think you it's know? great i think all the tricks you're doing the the elevation i feel like you're opening a window for kids who think like you who are don't say it publicly have something to, to look forward to so the 50 tricks across the country that was insane out <laughs> there's times i to talk to roy and be like yo is this guy good like does he have gas money like what is he doing <laughs> i know how you are you can you throw yeah. you in the wild, you're gonna come back no matter what. Yeah. You're like, yo, it's good, guys. Like, <laughs> yo, you won't believe what happened. I have this story, you know. So it's it's cool to see that like you're yeah. doing everything that you like love to do. Still, you get to skate still, so that's cool. Yeah, I'm trying. I love it, man. I never stopped, you know. But uh, so when you met Manny, I want to go back to that mm-hmm, for yeah, a second. Yeah. So how did you get like meet those guys? Dude, honestly, you know? that just kind of popped out of nowhere, and you were like going with the what ammo and. Yeah, all them and stuff like I, that. I feel like so. This is what happened. I would always go to Tampa every year and and always go to all that Tampa Am contest, hang out with Harvey and Ian. And one year I filmed Manny. This is how it happened. I filmed Manny and all the famous guys because I love that whole crew. That just their energy. I love the the hype. Like squads are just going crazy. Ah! And I would just film those guys because those were my favorite skaters. And I filmed everybody in the contest as well. And this was back in the day when CDs were around. So like I put all this footage on a CD. And was like, what if I gave this footage to Felix? And was like, yo, I don't know what you can do with it, but here you go. Shit you not? A whole year goes by. I'm like, man, probably threw that CD away. Who knows what that footage is at? I'm like watching his Welcome to Famous and like footage from that thing is in his edit. And I'm like, (laughs) oh, oh my God, what do I do? I remember telling Roy. Roy's just like, bro, I don't care about the money, man. I'll be cool with a couple t-shirts. I said something funny. It was like one of my funny little slogans. And then Roy's like laughing like, what? So then, like, down the road, I don't know how I got a hold of Manny. Like, maybe it was, like, Facebook or my – I don't know, MySpace. One of those, like, DMs. And was like, yeah. yo, dude, thanks. Da, 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 da. And then I was vlogging. And then I think one day I was just like – I had his number somehow. Okay. Oh, actually, I got his number at Tampa that same weekend because Manny's just like that. He's super cool. He's like, yo. And I always had it in my phone. I was like, I don't know. I have it. I don't know. I don't know. Like, do I hit him up? Do I not hit him up? Do I not hit him up? I was yeah. like – one day I was like, man, forget this. Joe was doing number three, and I was like, yo, bro, what up? And it was so hard to like keep a conversation because you're so nervous. You don't know how to hold a conversation with these people. So you're like, what do I say? I'm like, yo, I need some clips for this video, the homie video. He's like, yeah, yeah, I got you. Conversation so quick because you don't really know what to talk about after that. Like, oh, how's your morning? Like, you don't know. Like, so you just kept, <laughs> yeah, I kept just it trying. short and sweet. So then 
um, he sends over like three clips for the number three video, and then that's how his footage was in there. And um, after that was like my episodes were going, and I was like, yo, we should do an episode. And then he came to New York. We did an episode. We hung out. And then I was like, I'm going to go to Boston. And then, like, every time he'd be home, he'd call me. I'd go there. Then I was scared a lot of the homies he was with. And then I did episodes with them. And then I went to Philly. I met those guys, the other guys in action. And mm. just one thing led to the next. And then that's yeah. when I got the call to go. It's funny, man. The first time I saw you and, like, Manny skating together, I was like, oh, that's perfect. Like, you guys are like a match. Yeah. Made in heaven. And you brought up that energy, like, that the ammo crew had mm-hmm. and shit. And I was just like, that is... You know, you, like, fit right in with that. Yeah, I don't know how it worked out, but, like, it, Felix being my mentor and helping me out with a lot of things and then meeting all the young kids like Johnny and Diego. And then, I don't know, just I love skating so much, and I, my energy, how it always was, it was the same thing. Like, But uh, it was cool to actually be able to work with all those guys and still be able to work with them now. Yeah. And see, I don't know, it's weird. It's like, it just seems normal now, you know, like, call them, like, hey, what's up? Like, <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah, you should try eat this or, you know, be healthy or do Like, it's different now, but... But it's crazy. I, I can't. I like. I think when I drive down these streets and I'm like visiting you and and like doing this, and I'm just like, yeah. How is it being back home? Kind of bugged out. I mean, it's. I always come home when I can, but it's always like work. I never get to like venture out and go down Babylon or or go down like where Joe lived and like see the box we used to pull out. Like I get notifications still on Facebook, like oh this day memory, and I'm like, <laughs> wow. I'm like, yeah. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, it's funny stuff. All right. So after that, you were doing the what was it? Manny slays all right or something for like his yeah I was website? yeah I was doing a lot of uh, Manny's content doing all the uh, YouTube videos I was also um, blogging on the site and uh, did that for a while with him and then just filmed a lot of video parts one thing led to another I didn't know you were blogging well yeah I was I was blogging well that was back then that's pretty cool yeah, yeah. so what were you doing just like logging like how the day was and stuff yeah like we that would and... we would I would do like shout out pro skaters birthdays on there we do uh, you know five five on flats we would do like slay Sundays with a little street montage yeah. we were just doing a bunch of okay. bunch of little edits and like that was like early YouTube days and it was like we were like cr- almost creating like a barracks or a skate site but it was like through Manny's thing and it was like Manny let me have free range and do whatever I wanted to it was like oh yeah this idea cool do it yeah. and then he would help out with graphics and we'd go back and forth on things and and it really became like a full-on thing like we almost had we had seven segments we literally have a segment a day and i was just like because every day i would like certain the slots would be open of the days like monday wouldn't have nothing to this day and i was like man what if throwback thursdays we get all this footage from people and and then we had like i don't know if it was throwback it was some it was a name for that throwback thursday but uh it was called blast from the past that was one, and then we had Slay Sunday, then we had Five on Flat on Tuesdays. Wednesdays was something. I think it was maybe his Live and Learn web series we started, and then Monday was, like, just a recap, like, a little 30-second. Like, you can click on the highlighted videos, and, like, like that was a highlight reel of, like, the last weekend. But it was a lot okay. of stuff. Yeah, that's one. a lot to keep up with. <laughs> and then I had, like, an interview on Saturday, who, what, where, when, how. Damn. Why, how. Like, I don't know, it was a bunch of stuff. Yeah, and then that led you... To California. Well, I was like already do- there. Oh, you doing, were there. Doing I was doing that, that already, okay. like a year, two years in, and then yeah. doing stuff with him, working on video parts, and still and working at famous. At I was staying time. at Felix's house. If it wasn't for Felix, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. That's pretty wild. So he just like let you. And like, that's yeah, why I'm you- in the same position I am now because I do the same for him. Like I'm doing the same for a lot of skaters. Like I did it for Diego. I did it for Yo Yo. Like people come stay at my house, and it's like weird. Like life almost re- like yeah. does a full 360 Plus, yeah, without even circles, knowing. Right. And, like, you naturally just become this person that you spend time around other people and you, like, pick up on things they did. And that's one thing that, like, Felix would always he'd open his house to anybody. Like, you know, you want to work, you want an opportunity, here you go. But, like, don't don't yeah. fuck this up. Like, yeah, give me keys to his car, whatever. Here you go. It yeah, was the wildest really? thing. Yeah, but I would be like, uh, you know, I used a team van. I was, like, nervous to drive this guy's car. I'm like, uh, I don't know. Like, in L.A., like, what if something happens? Like. That's crazy, man. So what happened next? So you're there living in his house. Living with like, Felix. And then we like get... we all like Manny eventually was like, I gotta grow up. So I go with Manny. I move with Manny into an apartment with him. And um Is that the house he has now with the skateboard? No, that was no. before. Oh. So I was in an apartment. I went from Felix's to this apartment, lived in there, um, with Manny and his son, his you know, his, his baby mama, and and we did that and for a while, a couple of years, and then Manny was like, "I want to move to the valley, live closer, skating with Paul, and all this stuff." And it was like, "Let's go to move to the valley." So then we ended up moving there, and a couple of years of that spot, Paul's place, and then like 
you know, things with me and Manny were like, not like bad or anything. It was just like growing up, you know, you've been around someone for so long. It was like more of like, and I thank him for that. We will talk about it later. We're best friends. You yeah. know, nothing. We're always no bad blood. Mm -hmm. I thank him for like actually me and him, like, go, like going head to head in a way of like, you know, not seeing eye to eye because doing that grew me in a situ situation. Like it made me have to like go find other things. Yeah. And like, I feel like sometimes it seems bad at the moment because you're like, angry with each other but i feel like it's good because it actually makes you a better person because i feel like when people go get into arguments we always look at the negative but don't see the positive out of that situation yeah i feel like my positive out of it was manny was like yo you're too comfortable you like what you have you you should go get more i, I never really thought of it like that till now yeah like sitting in this chair thinking about it i'm like damn like that's an awesome thing to reflect on i've i've been on both sides of that too where i'm like mad at someone thinking like they're not seeing what I'm seeing, and then something happens, and then years later you realize like you built yourself so much stronger having to figure out what to do yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I feel like I was pretty self-sufficient, but I had a lot of support from everybody. But I feel like that moment right then and there was like, damn, I gotta go do this and do that, and and then um, yeah, I just. So what'd you end up doing like from that? I ended up actually um, moving into one of Shane's houses. Really? Shane O'Neill? Like, yeah, yeah. And okay. then, like, connected with him, and it was crazy. Like, we were so close. Like, I don't know, like, the skate community. I didn't know what I was going to be honest where I was going to go after that. But, um, yeah, at the time, and then he ended up riding for Primitive, and then I ended up getting a job at Primitive because I was just around with all those guys, and, like, they didn't have a team manager. Okay. So I went on one of these trips to Street League. It was where I was doing YouTube stuff with Paul, too, at the time. Because the park was so close to Manny's house and all that, where Manny stayed. And yeah, just one thing led to another, and I got an opportunity. It was this Barcelona trip, and they were like, yo, we want you to be the team manager. And I was like, what? What's that? That's primitive? Yeah, yeah. Damn. He texted me. I was like, whoa, what? <laughs> like, that's crazy. Like, what? So I get to, like, manage you guys. I, didn't, I was confused, and I was like, it makes sense. Still get to film and stuff. And then... So this was after you had, you were, like, what, moving out of Manny's, or you had moved out of Moved out of, out of Manny's. Trying to figure out what I was gonna do. Yeah. Oh, so this was probably like when this happened. You were like, yeah. Damn, at the time, man. I was still doing stuff with him. We, uh, cause he got on Echo at the time. Okay. So I was still doing Echo stuff with him, and then Chaz lived there, so I did stuff with Chaz. Okay. So film stuff with Chaz, and yeah, just doing that, and it's a lot of freelancing, moving around, and um, just figuring out. Yeah. Figuring out myself, figuring out like where to go, what to do. Did you ever think of like going back home at all, or Never. Never, that was completely never? I was, I was, yeah. I was, I was there. Like I don't, whatever it was gonna be, I was gonna figure it out all there. I was never trying to go home because it was like that was like the the easy way out. Oh, you gotta go home, you gotta go home. Like yeah. nah, I feel like when you're there and your mentality is about like moving on or hustling and doing moving something. Forward, yeah. yeah, moving forward, it's just it's natural. Damn. All right, so you're in Shane O'Neill's house, right? You're really, like renting a little spot. There yeah, or renting a spot. Did uh, was there anything you saw like living with him that stuck out like that separates him from other skaters? Like how he's so unbelievable and amazing. You know, like a work ethic. Well, or, we lived uh, in two something. different places. I lived on a different side of this his house where he's at, and okay. he lived in a different part. But we actually met up a lot. I think one thing that, I'm sure you skated a lot. Yeah, we yeah. we hung out. We skated a lot for sure. We still do now. And um, I feel like one thing I would say is like his determination of like how he does his stuff he's very strategic and he's like uh he's really calculated which is good you know because i feel like if you're not you're kind of off you know yeah. in certain aspects in life he's very calculated dialed in knows what he wants to do what he wants to get done and um just executes it it's yeah. it's pretty crazy yeah I, he taught me a lot man he taught me like you know i feel like i was i was growing up this whole time so you realize i moved out there when i was 20 so I'm 29 now. So I yeah. was there for nine years, and I lived a lot of early 20s out there and learning like how to grow up. And like, I mean, me and Shane are the same age, but he's definitely a lot like older in a sense of like been through a lot in life. And I feel like he just you know different responsibilities and teaching things how you know. Mm -hmm. But I've been around so many different people, and you learn from so many people. Like Paul, I learned a lot from Paul. I learned a lot from Manny. Just learn a lot from everybody around you. Pick up on things. Yeah. You know? Also, I feel like you learn a lot from people like 
like Paul or Shane that have been around lots and lots of people and had lots and lots of experiences too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's like a, you probably learn a lot just being around oh, superstars yeah. in any sport. You know what I mean? Yeah. Especially being a fan of them first and then becoming friends with them. It's kind of crazy. You're like, what? And this guy's <laughs> telling me to wake up, let's go skate. I'm like, oh, this yeah. is crazy. You know what's funny? It just popped in my head. I remember seeing, I'm watching a video on YouTube and I see a commercial pop up and it was a primitive commercial mm -hmm. and you were in it. And I was like, what? I haven't seen you in years. And I was just like. Which one was it? Was it the. I think you were in a warehouse maybe or or something. I don't know. Or maybe you were just talking. I can't remember. Was it the. Maybe was Paul it, was, was it, walking maybe? Oh, yeah. Was it the. Something? Was it like the one with like an <laughs> unboxing video or something? Or was it funny? Maybe. Yeah, I yeah. think it was that. We did a bunch of them. We did <laughs> the funniest one I think is the one where we switch bodies. We like switch bodies and I become him for like a day and then he becomes me. Who, Peter? But yeah, oh. Paul, yeah. But it wasn't it, it wasn't legit. Of course I didn't get the real yeah. thing, but it was cool. Like the commercial's funny, so you gotta watch it. That's funny. All right, so let's see where we're at. So you're at Shane's house. He's on primitive. He left primitive though, right? Yeah, he left primitive, started his own brand, April Skateboards. Um yeah, um, he was on Primitive for, uh, say, like, three years. I, I can't. Yeah. I was there for like it's funny saying it now, like, thinking about him on Primitive. I feel like he doesn't fit in necessarily. Like, it's cool. Um, like, it almost seems like a natural segue that he started his own thing. Well, I, yeah, I think it was destined to happen regardless. He's just, you know, because it's just we all want our own things, I feel like. But not in that sense, but I feel like he just wanted to have a place to – help his friends and, and, you know, change kids' lives and stuff mm -hmm. and skaters and help them out. So I feel like that was destined to happen regardless, even if he was still on Primitive or doing something. Like, I feel like it would have – he would have done something regardless. It would have happened, you know? Yeah. That's cool that that was the motivation behind it to kind of, like, you know, yeah, help his he, friends and That's and what he, that's like what that. he's always about yeah. is trying to help other people. Like, it, he helped me letting me live in his house and, you know, give me the opportunity. He could have been like, yeah, you can only live here for a year. You got to go. You know, yeah. uh, it's been five years now, you know. Damn. So you're here. still there? Yeah, I'm still oh, there. Oh, nice. Hell yeah. Yeah. Shout out Shane O'Neill, <laughs> man. Housing me. That's my landlord. First and foremost, yeah. landlord, <laughs> friend, pro skater. And then, like, I go, as the tears. I always tell him, like, that's the landlord. Mm, that's so funny. Yeah, no, yeah, it's it's <laughs> really the landlord. Like, So, all right. So what's your... So are you still working with Primitive at this point, like where we left off? Um, you there I, for a little? I was there for a little while, and then he left, and then I left, and I like. Now, why did you leave? Like, was there any certain just reason differences? Just, yeah. I had differences with, you know. I don't want to say like exactly the reason why, yeah, but yeah, I had, yeah, I had yeah, I had differences and didn't see eye to eye on certain things that I was doing. And it was no bad blood. I'm still families with all the, with everyone over there, Paul and all those guys. I just had to feel like I needed to grow too. I feel like it was a position where like I myself felt I was like a little stagnant. Mm. They like where I was at and I didn't feel like I was like growing in any way. So I was yeah. just I, I had this weird thing. I was just like, Man, I'm gonna call like I, Felix was working in a diamond at the time. I was like, I'm gonna call him and see what's up. And it was like Right then and there, I was just like, yo, what's good? Like, any opportunity? That's good that you... And then 15 minutes later, I got a contract. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Wild. Yeah, it's good that you, you were saying that that risk. Like, you like having a little bit of risk. Like, be comfortable, but... And I think that's a huge point. It's like, because once you get stagnant, that's when things start. You don't feel that great. You need a little bit of risk, like, pushing your limits always. And I think that's, what, bit, that's what... Like, I'm not saying I didn't... Like, there was no more... Like I said, when I said there was no room to grow, like there probably was room to grow, but I just didn't feel it at that time. Yeah. I permitted, and I felt like I I needed I needed a, like you said a spark, and I feel like when I made the change to go to Diamond, I just seen all this like opportunities and things to do, and I was like, I'm going, I'm doing this, and I and I never like in life you don't want to ever look back, but also at the same time it's like those times are great times. I always loved all those moments. The yeah. primitive moments like they they taught me so much just on everything. Just when it came to marketing and it came to just everything. Dealing how to deal with certain people's personalities. Like you don't realize everyone's not you. So you can't talk to everyone the way you talk to your your homies yeah. or whatever. Like so it taught me a lot of like growing up too there. Cause it was actually like working in a facility where it's like company you go in and all the stuff and it's like wow like yeah so wait so you were the team manager so not only you have to deal with like all the people higher up in the company but then you have to take the whole team out yeah and deal with those to, personalities course, too and like and that's tough on the road trying to manage like 
one guy wants this thing, one guy wants to hit this spot, one guy wants yeah, to eat yeah, here. Yeah, you gotta, like, you gotta you really know. just like cater to everybody. It's more of just like it's not about you, it's about them. Yeah. So it's it's cool though, cause you you learn. Oh, this guy's like this. I know. Oh, he's gonna have a problem waking up. Oh, this guy needs this. Oh, his board's not gripped. He didn't. and it's like, bro. And you start teaching like, yo, you guys like not so knowing you, what's going on. Have here? you went on any crazy trips at Primitive? I haven't literally talked to you at all. Like, yeah, I, I know this is cool. We're catching up. I went on um my last trip with them when I was I went to Paris. That was cool. Then when I got on Diamond, then we went to Paris again. I was like, oh crap, I'm going back to Paris. Like, <laughs> but I went to like crazy Texas tour. I went to Spain for the first time with them when it was small. Like I was there in the beginning when like pretty much right when it started. Like I was so it's pretty wild to see it all grow to what it became. Seeing yeah. Passion get on and all these people and. It's cool, man. Trent, Diego, everybody, like Brian, Devin. Um, I'm trying to think, man. Three, like it's been like, if I see the videos, I'm like, oh, I was there for that. I was there for that. Yeah. Any crazy stories like on the road that stick out to you? Just like being out in Paris or crazy stories. Mm, nothing too crazy. Everyone's like cool, mellow, and fun. I think not crazy. I mean, we went to um, Nashville. We did a demo. We bought a like a. Um, a, like a kid size uh basketball hoop in the hotel room the hotel room was super long so like yeah. we had enough room we just Paul love playing this game called seven you like shoot the ball in whoever like misses gets the point so if you make it in you get a point but if you miss it behind me you get one point so you get the seven you're out okay so we bought like a little <laughs> mini like basketball court that was cool only that was crazy but yeah that's fun um story. <laughs> it was a fu funny story to just be like yeah. uh, occupy our time in the hotel room but right Damn. then and there i was just like wow this is like Real tour life. Yeah, man. So you had to, like, do all that. And then, were you doing the social media, too? Yeah, sometimes I do the stories. I, um, I feel like that could be a lot. Like, just doing social media even by itself sometimes could be, like, Yeah, yeah, handful, they had filmers you know? at the time, so that my only role, they try to, like, oh, you can only, like, you just do, like, um, team management stuff. So they're like, cool. And then, like, get on the phone stories because they had Kevin, who's doing the stuff. And then before that, Kyle and Alan would be there, do all the videos. So it was like, just just do stories and stuff. Then sometimes the demos, they would have me host a demo. So I'm on the microphone. Oh, yeah, MCing? Doing, yeah, MCing, <laughs> I'm filming. I'm like, so it was cool. I, I enjoyed it. It was, a, it was a fun time. Yeah, I can imagine just like, yeah, traveling, being in charge. That's probably a lot of responsibility. I feel like having that much yeah. responsibility just grows you in a way that you can't otherwise. Yeah, I think it know? just naturally... I'm just like that as a person, so I think I took on the opportunity to be like, all right, cool, this sounds fun. Yeah. Let's do it. That's so funny. Um, so then you got on – all right, so you're doing the Diamond team managing. How's that been? It's a big team. Is it? There's a lot of people. <laughs> They've been the, around what? Since like – 20 years. Really? Since 20. like 99? Something, like something like that. Actually, no, 98. 98? 98. Wow. I want I, – Correct me, I think so, yeah. Yeah, somewhere around them. But 20 years. The brand's been around for 20 years. Damn. They got a big team. They do bolts mainly, or that's bolts, how they started, they, right? Yeah, bolts. They have clothes. Yeah, they have all those accessories, like... collabs, and stuff. But, um, yeah, they have a big team. A lot of new kids, too, coming out, like, trying to hook up as, like, all the new kids that are coming up and the OGs. I still be sending boxes to OGs, like, yo. And if I see him a couple times, like, yo, let's catch a clip. Like, Mike York was in the park not that long ago. Really? Got a little edit what? of him. That's cool. I think it's there's a lot of nostalgia in that brand, and and I remember seeing it when I was growing up at like Sauce and stuff. So. Yeah, me too. So it's pretty wild to be like, oh shit, like you work for Diamond now. That's funny. So that's yeah, that's a lot of companies. No one really has a big team like that. I guess a couple of people do like Shake John or yeah. I feel like the, a lot of some accessories you know. brands that have that like I would say like uh, Spitfire. Thunder mm -hmm. Venture. So you're on you're running the diamond team and that park is like unbelievable. Oh, it's unbelievable. Yeah. The diamond mine's crazy. I so many people come in and out of there from artists to skaters, influencers. Oh really? Yeah. It's not like just skating? Well, just people having meetings and stuff. I was there one day, I'm walking out of work and YG's there. I'm like, Oh, what's up, dude? <laughs> He's like, if I have my board, I would skate this. I'm like, oh, crap. All right, later. <laughs> I'm out. Like, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. Like, yeah. So many people just come there and skate every day. They're like, you're at the office, Mike. Oh, I'm going to come pull up. And all of a sudden, it's like quiet. And all of a sudden, you just see like 20 people just pull up. 10 people pull up. It's occupied. People are working on the other side. You're like, 
So is that like your home base? Are you, yeah, I'll go yeah. in and check in there, say what's up to everybody, and then go street skate. So whoever I'm on the team, I'll go out skating with them, film some stuff, social media, lookbook videos. I'll go there throughout the week and just make sure everything's all good. And then I'll have dudes pull up too. Like there's not much any street stuff happening because now that school's back in, it's not so many spots during the week. Some, but not much. So yeah. more of like strategically planned for the weekend. And... Yeah, just have a lot of park sessions throughout the week practicing. So you guys, you'll like get like a big crew together and take a van out or something on the weekends? Nah, we'll just meet up. I'll just meet up with a lot of the dudes and just go skate with them. Because everyone's scattered everywhere. Yeah. So like different crews and different skaters are all just be like, yo, we're going to this spot, meet up. And skate with a lot of the younger kids. I feel like trying to bring them up. Damn. So what's, uh, what's the future of Diamond looking like? Like for you and like what? You know, any trips coming up or... Yeah, planning some trips. Um, Just like I said, focus on a lot of the younger kids now. I know Tampa Am's coming up, Tampa Pro. Um, Definitely planning to do a, like a team trip, but like a lot of separate team trips, a lot of different people. So we're trying to mix, you know, all the skaters in certain areas and see who can, whose schedule is available to go where. Um, Working on another video because I dropped a video not that long ago. I don't know if you got to see it, but it's called Diamonds in the Rough. No, I don't think I saw it. What? Check it I out. I have to check it out. Yeah. Like a full length or No, 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 full length. Just like a six minute edit that I had. It was I was just right when I started working. I just started filming a bunch of people that are around and available who wrote for okay. Diamond. And I was like, this is just gonna make this video. And then Nick saw it and was like, yo, like we should like have you do more of these videos throughout the year and then try to work on a bigger video. Cause I want to make the real actual diamond video with all the diamond riders in it, you know. That would be sick. But there's so many people. I was thinking like, man, maybe I just have to do one trick and that's it. Like yeah. B roll. It could be cool, different just thing. Just one though, trick, like a couple just of like, sections maybe of like yeah, but, that you know. too, or whoever has a lot of footage who rides for them, like yeah, can have like a little mini part because it'd be a really long time to sit in the theater. Yeah. Well, <laughs> or you could put funny. it out in sections. You can make the video and maybe thirty minute like increments or something. Yeah. I was actually talking with, I think it was Sasser or someone about this. It was um, like how we release videos in a different way now. You know, they used to be like full mm-hmm. 60 minutes, you know, and now it's like a six minute video on YouTube. You know what I mean? It's not like that full big experience. Yeah. Know? I think a lot of companies now are just doing that. That's like the method, like montages, like yeah. 10 minute montages and you still have your favorite skaters in it. Because I feel like you get more out of it and more comes out of the skater as well because he gets to save a lot of his footage for other projects. So he can give you a sprinkle here, a sprinkle there, and he'll never be missed. Yeah. No, I mean, it was a lo- like an amazing time like with those videos, but I feel like now it's almost more practical. It's like you get more exposure. Mm-hmm. You, I don't know, you get put out to a montage quickly. Yeah. You know, share it and get people hyped on something. Mm-hmm. Or even put but- out one trick. That's true, yeah. Right on Instagram. <laughs> so it's funny. Where do you see like the, the going down the road, like with X Games and I'm not X Games, like the Olympics and it's good. You know, getting like shorter clips and like you know. What do you mean in a sense? Like 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 the clips are shortening, and I don't know. I'm just trying to get your input on like where you think it's going, like with the Olympics skateboarding. It's bigger, I, yeah, you know. it's, I, people are gonna probably hate me on this. <laughs> Uh, response, but I think skating deserves to be as big as 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 big as basketball and these things. I think it's great. I feel like it opens more doors and opportunities for these people, and also we get looked at in in a different light if we are on a bigger platform. I think maybe it would it would help out with street skating. I don't know. I feel like when someone knows, oh, this is what they do, like. And then maybe you get like a professional card or something. I don't know. You could get to skate that spot. I, or maybe yeah. I don't know. I, I know it's you like have a given Olympic sp- athlete at your house now, and it's like different than looking at it as, you know, like a little kid damaging yeah. your property. You know, but what I but mean? I feel like maybe it would open up the doors if like for those kids. I don't know. I feel like I feel like it's a good thing. I think I skateboarding should always go bigger with you. because I think the bigger yeah. it gets, I feel like the market it opens up more opportunities for brands, and I feel like it would raise the market in a different way. And I feel like parents would want to get a skateboard before they would get a baseball bat. Yeah, and then they would let their kids go to the skate park instead of not saying nothing about the sports. Sports are good. Everyone who does like yeah. NFL, everyone every, they're they're fine, but I feel like skateboarding needs to be seen more, and I feel like it 
it changes a lot of people. I feel like it grows all of us up. I feel like musically, I feel like I've like all different types of music because of skate videos. Oh yeah. I basically like my whole library is from scattered skate videos yeah, over the years. And you yeah. wouldn't think if you first heard it elsewhere, you'd be into it. That's funny. Yeah. I think you're spot on with that. Like, I don't think it's a bad thing that it gets as big as like a basketball or something like that. Cause I think skating when it started, I feel was, it's like an anti-culture type of thing. And mm. everyone was like, you know, all right, we're different. And it's kind of that disappearing or changing. I think that's why people like stick to that. Cause you don't want to see that amazing part of it kind of disappear. You know, that raw little kid, like not, you know, selling out type of stuff. You don't want to see that go away and become commoditized or something. It, it will. I don't think yeah. it will ever go away. I think it's like anything. It's like it's just always going to be that part of like history. It's like as long as the skate shops are always there, they still have that nostalgia. I don't know. I, I go to a lot of skate shops. My thing was going and seeing if they still had skate videos because I'd buy up all their skate videos. So I literally would like go to shops and be like, oh, you had really sorry. So I'll, this sounds crazy, but I have my New York <laughs> collection of videos and I have my LA collection of videos. Okay. I was like, I'll never bring my New York collection ever, <laughs> ever, ever to California, leaving it here, whatever. I'm going to start all over my shit. You not. I have the same, almost the same amount of videos back then. Like now. Really? Yeah. It's crazy. I got hundred DVDs in my house now in LA. And like, Is the New York side cassette tapes? Or what? Yeah, I have cassettes <laughs> and I have um, DVDs. I have the booklet. I have like, I don't know. People trip out on that. Like I just I'm, like so sacred to it. Like I don't care how older I get. I'm gonna keep those. Like like as like yeah. My your I don't know your parents will get rid of stuff. I get so mad. I remember Torty like bro. I gotta move. Like here's all my four hundred ones. I'm like you could have them. Like bro, they're mine because they're yours. These are still yours. You ever need them? I got them. Like, I would store people's stuff. I would be like, before you can get rid of anything, give it to me. I will hold on to it. Just because I wouldn't want you to get rid of that. It'd be like down the road, like, hey, man, uh, you still got my 401? I'll be like, yeah, bro, I got your 401. Come pick it up. <laughs> because it's, like, not fair. Like, yeah. that, like, hurts my heart. Like, when someone throws their old stuff away, like, what? Yeah, I still got boxes of cassette tapes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Whether you're, like, three videos or, like, three videos that you grew up watching that were like the main things that influenced you city stars and photosynthesis first too mm. and, photosynthesis for me too yeah, yeah and um it's like birdhouse and in bloom like those between those two mm. in bloom definitely yeah but i'm saying like the videos that i got started in with skating was photosynthesis and that mm. yeah photosynthesis was like the time for me for sure yeah <sighs> It's crazy. I still watch it now and it gives me that same feeling. Like I could close my eyes and play the video and hear like waiting for someone to come on us. So and I can literally think back of like springtime, like learning how to 50-50, like just I have to go to school on Monday, like, but I don't. You know, it's like it's weird how a video <laughs> will give you this feeling. Like Yeah, nostalgia. Is there a reason that you feel like it has such had such an impact like that video? You know? Well, then it was just everything came out, and that was it. You got it when it came out. Now things are so packaged, like you said, differently. It's not the same feeling when you get the DVD with the bonus. You're like, oh, pay 30 bucks. I got the bonus footage. Yeah. Like, you know, you don't know what's coming. Now it's like there's promotion. People are telling you when things are coming out. Is it going to be as good as it, the last one? Like, yeah. you don't know. I think then it was just so spontaneous. And when you first watched it, you weren't, you weren't expecting what you were going to get. That's funny. Yeah. I always get this feeling of i don't know if a video like all the videos are amazing but if it has something to do with me being younger and like everything is exciting and amazing when you're young and that time of your life you like look back on so fondly if that's why people always like hold that older generation highly i don't know if i worded that right but like yeah, with yeah. music you like you the know 90s. Oh, the 90s were the best or like my time period, the '60s were the best. Well, it's only the and, it's yeah. only the best because we were young and that was so like impactful to us. So yeah. we say that was the best then, and you don't people don't understand now. But everyone is dressing like the '90s. Everyone's buying retro clothes. Everyone's it's they're living in like a time where it's like where it was lived. You know, <laughs> that's funny. All right, so what's the future looking like for Spanish Mike? 
I want to have fun. I want to grow. I just want to like help my friends and just um, give back as much as I can. That's really what it is about giving back. So you got a couple guys with you now, like yeah, yeah I got Daniel Scales and Johnny Hernandez with me now out here in New York. So we're skating around the city, just having fun, and just like a couple more friends coming in. And I think it just it's I've never missed a summer trip. I'd always made this like New York summer trip. I'd always <laughs> do it and bring all the primitive guys, and I always kept it going on every year. And I oh really. I, I didn't know that. I would do it every year. I mean, it wouldn't be in the length of time I would have right now on this trip, but it was a uh, like ten day trip, and I would always have it every summer. I think it was like since Diego was around. I did it like since two thousand fifteen, fourteen. I would come every year, every summer. I would still come back by myself, but I think after the fourteenth or fifteenth is when I every year since then now. Hmm. And so for like, how long was that trip usually? Like, 10 days, okay. 15 days. I was going to say, you're home for like a month, you said, and I was like, damn, that's a long Yeah, yeah, long, yeah, but I'm trip. saying like, I'm saying yeah. the, the before, the ones before would be like yeah. small trips with them and just stack footage for videos. And it was cool, man. I just feel like so many pro skaters come and stay at my house and like parents just like, oh, this person, this person, I'm like, oh, this person, this. I had Bastion stayed at my house. He signed my Thrasher cover him, fake really? flipping it. Yeah, I'm like... <laughs> Did your dad ever like recognize any of the pros or anything some, like videos or some? But he, you know, my dad's just funny, like, oh, what's up, guy? <laughs> I miss your dad. He's such a character. Yeah, just come by, man. Come hang out. <laughs> yeah, man, definitely. Do you have anything you'd want to tell to any, you know, coming up skateboarders or someone that was in your position that was like a filmer, you know? And yeah, I mean, I would say one thing is to uh, never give up and always be determined and be passionate. I have a lot of passion. I feel like that's where it got me where I'm at. I was always passionate and I never gave up. And I know it sounds like the, um, <clears throat> excuse me. It sounds like the old sob story of, Oh yeah. Passion, whatever. Like, but really it is like, you can be one yeah. of those people. Like I was literally one of the million. I went pay up. And I say that to people, they're like, what? I'm like, no, seriously. Ask my friends like this, but I was always like that. I always thought it would make jokes to Brett. Like watch, I'm gonna be friends with this person. Watch I'm gonna be. And somehow I don't know what, but it was just like, think, think. Was there something like that? stuck out to you that was a change in your mindset or behavior that kind of helped you like at that position when when you started shifting like to succeeding at what you were trying to do i think it was always trying to prove somebody else wrong because in school they would always be like oh you're never gonna amount to this or do that and i think it was always of a proving wrong thing then it was more of like a but the proving wrong was almost to, almost to show you that if i can do it you can do it yeah. So I would try to prove these people wrong. And where it's like, no, I'm just showing you and letting you know it's possible. Oh, no, this is possible. And then I met all these people that were doing that already. It was just plug and play. Like, oh, wow. Like, they're in the same mindset that I'm in. So it's like, it was never like, oh, you can't do that. It was like, no, I'm going to do that. I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it. And when I do it, you let me know if I did it good or not. Mm. That's funny. Yeah, I honestly did the same kind of thing with, like, when I did... When I do like my challenges, let's say mm -hmm. 50 states um, on my phone, the whole thing, like I'm doing that in a sense to show people that they could do it themselves just with a phone. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's a weird element. I don't know what what like drives us to do really things like that. I think being a skateboarder, yeah. any skateboarder you talk to will tell you they're driven in a certain, certain way. And if some don't turn out to be pro skaters or not, they're driven in other ways, you know? Their passion becomes something else, and they become good at it. That's true. I think that's a common theme across skateboarding. It's like they're just very kind determined. of determined, yeah, 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 determined, yeah. Think, passionate yeah. people. And we seem crazy the way we think, but I think it's people really like, oh, wow, well, yeah. you guys think differently. Yeah, it's weird. All right, man. Do you have any last words? I think this is great. Yeah, yeah. I think you got some good man on your hands. So Thank you gotta you. just keep bringing people and just keep it going. Thank you. I'm learning. I'm still I figuring need Roy, this shit I need out. Fuchs, like <laughs> I need every. I got a, Jason, Jason Branch. If you're out there, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. Honestly, I have no idea where this is gonna go, but no, I'm just like to keep, catch up with everyone it. and kind of, I don't know, just, I don't know. I just always like learning about skateboarding and people's mindsets and like why. We all do things, so it'd be cool. Well, you're a talker anyway. You like to talk to people, so I feel like this is great for you, and I feel like you have to should get some random strangers on here too. Just get, I'm telling you, people are gonna yeah. start. Yeah, I, th I don't know. I think you should just start reaching out to whoever's around, and even if they're, if they can't come to you, go to them. I was thinking, really, think that 
pack. I get so locked in. Hey. Like I feel like I should stay like in this. No, nah, like, stay. You this know. is great. I love it. Yeah. This is like the first 10, 20 episodes, and then yeah. you're on the road with it. That's true. I mean, I I, I'm pretty sure you can take. Yeah. yeah, you already did fifty tricks, fifty states. What about fifty <laughs> interviews? That's true. That's actually not a bad idea, right? You there. go to Florida, you hit up a pro skater out there, and then, or you, you know, next thing you know, you maybe hit musicians. Someone's on tour. Hey, I want to yeah. come and check with you real quick. Well, that's a funny thing because I really want to interview like all sorts of people. Yeah. And sometimes I feel like, like, um, I don't know, skateboarders would get bummed out if you like branch out or something. No, you know you, what I mean? You know, nobody will ever get bummed out. It'll just, pre it'll just separate categories. You'll have the skaters. You have influencers, yeah. you have musicians, you'll have designers, you know. Yeah, to people me, I'm love interested pets. in all. <laughs> you could, you know, Animal Planet, this yeah. people probably on Discovery Channel. Or... I'm honestly interested in anyone, like, pursuing anything passionately, really. That's really the only thing that's, like, the... What's something you like besides skating? Um, fishing. Any famous fishermen? Yeah, there's a bunch. So imagine going yeah. out by the lake and interviewing a fisherman <laughs> on a boat. I don't know. We're getting on a stretch now. Dude, we'll see. Chat overseas, dude. Feeble minded podcast. It's overseas. True. I mean, it's not completely out of the question. We'll see. Besides but... fishing, what else do you like? <laughs> I've never fished um, in my day in my life. I mean, I've really been into like the whole YouTube world, mm -hmm. you know? So just like anyone really doing like YouTubers or creating stuff like that. This is That's up your really... avenue. You're good, bro. You're part of that, like. Yeah. That system. I don't know. I, sometimes I get so locked into things. Like, I'll just, like, hyper-focus. Like, right, I got to stay skateboarding. I'm like, No, nah, it's know. great. I think I, <laughs> I, I love it. But I think you should take this on the yeah. road. I mean, once this takes off and you got budget where you can actually get in a, in a <laughs> you know, a vehicle that works and go across country. Yeah. I think you should. Hey, I have a vehicle that works. I took it across country already. Okay, okay, okay. I thought you had. I, was, I didn't know what you were taking, but I think, I think, I think personally, I would like to see this on the road. Yeah. Different tropical backgrounds. Imagine you on Miami Beach just interviewing. Just I mean, literally, just. I guess I could, right? Take a van, set it up. That's funny. Yeah, I guess I really could. I mean, I'm doing this all on my phone still. It's been yeah three years on YouTube and just still my phone. So I guess Apple. I could just go Apple Pay up. <laughs> Everyone's using their phones. Cut the check. That's true. Hell yeah. Killing it. Well, thanks for being a part of like one of the early of course. Know, episodes and of course. starting a new thing. It's cool. I honestly didn't even know what to expect. Just like, just like posting this to my channel, but I'm really just trying to do what like is interesting to me first and just follow that. You yeah. Know? So I like, Talking, obviously, you know that. Yeah, it's just, awesome. You know, and learning and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's cool to see. It's like to see where it goes. And thanks for coming in, man. Of course, bro. Oh, yeah. Good to see you, chat. Right, continue. Yeah. Be good.